Hello and welcome back to the shop. And yes, I'm still breathing. Um, I know I haven't been posting videos lately. Uh, I've been running around a lot at work and uh, doing a lot of stuff around here at the house trying to get things done. And when I have had time to the shop, um, I really didn't videotape it. Uh, you know, I was just playing around with the mill a little bit, kind of getting to learn its quirks, how it acts on certain materials um, in preparation for some videos. Now, I do have a bunch of of videos planned for the mill and uh, we, we will get to those. And what I'm going to do is make a separate video because I have a bunch of new shop ap acquisitions and a few view appreciation gifts that I like to get on video. I'm going to put those in uh, a separate video for you guys to watch because I know not everybody wants to see that and I'll also include kind of going over some of the projects that we're going to have for the mill. Today's video is something that I've been meaning to do for a while and it's kind of a comparison between, say, uh, tool holders for the lathe. So a premium tool holder like from AR Warner versus something you can get from Shaz for like 20 bucks. So we're going to see the differences between the tool holders manufacturing wise and see if there's any performance differences. And I also have some premium inserts versus some cheapo inserts. We're going to see if there's any difference between those and we'll throw them all together and do them on the lathe. Now, I'm going to show some tool holders here that I've already done reviews on and we're not going to rehash those that much. We'll just glance over them real quick. Whenever I show one of those tool holders, you'll probably see something up in the cards for a link to that video and also the links to all those videos will be down in the description, each one labeled. So, why don't we hop over here on the bench and see what kind of tools we got. Okay, so probably my most used tool holder is this one here. And this is part of an AR Warner set, so that's the whole set. Uh, obviously, you can use the right hand tool holder the most. Now, these take CCMT 3251 or 3252 inserts. Um, it's 100 bucks or a little over $100 for the set of this, this, and five of the high speed steel inserts. Does not come with any carbide inserts, only high speed steel. Uh, and it works great. And I actually have a whole full review of it. Uh, you can see up here in the cards or down in the comments. And I also in that video, I have uh, a whole description of what the nomenclature of the inserts are. So what, the number, what each number and letter actually means, if you want to go take a look at that. My one and only gripe with this tool, it's not a huge issue. This here, this side here, is the same insert as this but it's turned sideways so you get to use the two sides of the insert that you don't normally use. So you get to use this, this corner here and this corner here. Now it works wonders for chamfering. So you gotta break an edge, you can come in here and boom, break the outside edge or come in if the, if the hole's big enough in the center and come and chamfer an inside edge. Now it would be a lot more convenient if it was on the back of this right hand tool holder because this is the one that you're gonna be using all the time. So if it was on the back of this, you could have this in your toolbox like so. Go and turn your part, pick it up, move it to the other dovetail, so you have this end sticking out, and you know, boom, do your chamfering. Now, I get why they did it like this, and they, they did it on the other tools so that with the right hand tool, you can extend this all the way out to wherever you want. If you can see that they're both the same size, so they only have they only cut one certain length of stock. So if this was on this side, you're limited in, in your movement in and out of your tool block. Or if you wanted more movement, what they would have to do is lengthen this uh, tool holder, which would throw off their stock. So that's why they did it. It's not a huge thing, but you know that's just my one problem with this. But as far as tool tool holders go, works great. My other tool holder here, this is a DT tool holder, you can see a review of it up here. This is a little bit of a different animal, this is a negative rate tool holder, you can see it pointing down at an angle there. And this one will allow you to come in, turn your pot, flip it around to the other side and boom, chamfer inside and out. And I believe this is uh, around $80 or so with a couple of the inserts. Uh, I'm not sure, you'll have to double check the website again up in the cards. Another option, I have several of these is modified tool holders. So this was a one inch shank that was cut down to fit my tool post. And again, works, works okay. 
Okay, so I went off and bought a couple of cheaper tool holders just to see what the difference is. And obviously, first place I went to was Shars. And I got this holder right here for, I believe it was 25 bucks or something around that lines. And this is it here. And it came with the insert and the tool. Now, there's one problem I have with this, and let's put it next to the AR Warner here. And it's a little bit more bulky up here by the head. Not a huge thing, but it might be if you're in a certain situation, like playing next to the tailstock. But other than that, the other, the biggest problem I have with this, let me zoom you in and get something to point with. Okay, the other thing is, and again, not a huge thing, this relief hole is a lot bigger on this than it is on the AR Warner. And you can see the head is a little bit more bulky up here. It's still relieved nicely, perfectly fine, but here's the problem. If I turn it this way, all right, here you can see one of the issues I have. You can see the angle of the tool bit, and the AR Warner is relieved at that same angle of the tool bit. The Shars is not. The Shars, they went right to the edge of where the, the, the relief of the tool bit ends and just went straight down. So if I put a straight edge up here, I have a lot more clearance in here on the AR Warners than I do on the Shars. And the same goes for the front if I stand them up this way. Okay, you can see the AR Warner, ignore the big chip taken out of that. But <laughs> you can see the AR Warner continues the same angle of the actual carbide insert, whereas the Shars does not. As far as hardness goes, they're both hardened, but this Shars one actually feels a little bit more hard than the AR Warner does. Not that it makes a huge issue. Um, you can see the AR Warner doesn't, the screws don't bite into the AR Warner. Um, that's just took the, the, the uh, paint off or the, the, um, the blackening. It didn't make any dents in it. Okay. Now another one, and the only reason why I got this, and I was very disappointed in this, uh, I went to latheinserts.com, and they, um, build this holder as being from, being a Toolmax brand. Now Toolmax, they're head, they're headquartered in Natick, Mass, actually not that far from me. Uh, which is the only reason why I bought this. But when I got it, and this is the box that came in, you can see that is not a Toolmax brand. It is a, if I can focus, it's a, a, a Zhu Zhao Cemented Carbide Cutting Tool Codes Limited Huang, Huang Shi Huang Shi Southern Road Zhang Zhu Zhao Hunan People's Republic of China. So the only thing I know about that is I like the Hunan spicy beef at the Chinese place down the street. Other than that, I have no clue where that is. But you can see one glaring problem with this. And we'll put it next to the Shars. Look at the size difference. Now what's funny is if you look at it from that side and you look at it from the top, they look almost the same. They even have this same rounded cutout here. And they also have the same thing with the relief. They're just straight up and down on both sides. So I was very disappointed when I got that. Now also from them, I got this boring bar. And the reason why I didn't get a Shars one is because Shars didn't have this at the time. Uh, they were all out, and this takes the same insert, so this just takes a uh, 32 uh, size, 3251, 3252 uh, CCMT insert. So I can use the same insert on my um, turning tools as I do on the boring bar, and it's a half inch boring bar. And it's not through whole coolant. Shars does have ones that are. Now something else I got from Shars. is this right here oh and and the funny thing is is this one 
here was mo actually more expensive than the Shah's one. I think this was like 30 bucks. So this here, I, I think I think this is like 40 bucks or so. And it's a stand-up threading tool from Shaw's. Okay, and it came with one insert, 60 degree. And the reason why I went with stand-up insert is because you can get a lot of different sizes in this. You can get um, Acme threaded inserts. You can also get grooving inserts. There's a lot more different options to put in there than just a threading tool. So that's why I went with the stand-up one. And then also from Shaw's, I picked this up. So it comes with the holder that fits in your tool hold, tool block, and the cutoff blade, and ten inserts right here, and also the tool to remove the insert. Now, the only thing I've read about with problems with these is after a while it not holding. Let me get put the, the insert in the right way. It not holding the insert. So what I did notice is, I mean, even with that in there. I can still pull it out by hand, even though I push in. Let me just see if it's the insert itself. Let me try a different one. But see, I can still pull it out by hand. I don't know if that's supposed to be like that or not, but you know, we'll give it a shot and see what happens. And also, as far as testing carbide. I have the one, the Shars one here that came with this. These are about, uh, these are, I have all the prices written down. These are four and a quarter. I also have one that's for aluminum that we're going to try out. Those are 450 from Shars. Okay. Now the AR Warner inserts, which we've already tested out before, these are about um, seven dollars a piece and I have my normal Seco carbide insert these are about fourteen dollars a piece and I got sent this from from the guy that actually made this tool I got sent this insert here and that insert is a lamina um, CC GG LT05 insert for aluminum. So we're actually going to try this out too um, and see how that does in aluminum with this bit. So let's go up over on the lathe and we're actually going to try it out. So what, what we'll do is I'll load this up. I'll load up my regular AR Warner guy. We'll take a um, we'll take a cut and then we'll check the finish and we'll use the exact same settings and we'll take a cut with the Shars one and then we'll put the Shars and this one up against a piece of aluminum and then we'll play a little bit with the threading and maybe with the boring bar and then definitely with the cutoff tool. Okay so what we have here is a piece of 1018 I just took a, a it was a piece of scrap I just took a, a light skim cut on there just to um, just to even the surface out so what we're going to do is I have the AR Warner set with a brand new Seco insert. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to touch off. We're running about 400 RPM. Middle step pulley and we're going to take say 100 thousandths cut. Actually no. I'm not going to take 100 thousandths cut because I know it's not going to do that. So we're taking 150 thousandths off the diameter, so that's a 75 thousandths in feet. And we're going to run 5 thousandths feed rate per revolution. So this is 1018 so it's not the you know most pleasant stuff in the world but it's doing it it's struggling 
but it's doing it. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to trade out for the um, Shars tool, and we're going to take the same depth of cut and see if it does it. Okay, I'm going to get the Shars holder in there with the Shars insert. Now, this is more of a function of the actual insert itself than the holder. The holder is fine. As long as it holds the insert in the pocket, it'll cut, um, and it'll do what you want. We've already kind of gone over pros and cons of each. So I'm going to come in, touch right off to where we were, and we're going to continue that cut, see if it does it. All right, I cracked the insert. I broke the insert. I broke the Shaz insert, took the whole nose right off of it. All right, so we're gonna back it off to uh, 50 thousandths in feed and see if it does it. Now, just to show you, there's the tip of the other insert, and it's perfectly fine, even though it was struggling. So, index this stucker around. Usually I limit my depth of cut to 50 thousandths 50, thousand in feet, so um, 50 thousandths per side, 100 thousandths of the diameter. Let me just take this ragged edge off here. So there's a hundred thousandths. Doesn't like it, but it's doing it. And I actually welded a chip right to the, right to it. Okay, it's the same depth of cut, but this is with the Seco insert and the um, still with the Shaw's tool holder here. Just to show you, that it has more to do with your insert. Yeah, it's doing perfectly fine. That's doing perfectly fine and actually gave a pretty decent finish. Um, so, you know, like, I mean, a decent finish for 1018, let's put it that way. But, you know, it kind of goes to show you that it's more your insert, a good quality insert, rather than uh, the quality of the tool holder necessarily. Okay, this is what I was the most intrigued about, is this cutoff tool. So, I'm going to give her a shot, slow the lathe down, and uh, we'll have at it. Getting a little clogged up. That's what I was mainly worried about, especially with this 1018. Yeah, look at, look at the insert fell out. <laughs> it made it through, but the goddamn insert fell out. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. All right, so that one may not be the best. <sighs> Let me try flipping the insert insert around in uh, the insert holder around. That that's just that's ridiculous. Okay, so uh, flipped it around to the other side and it feels a little bit better in that pocket. We'll see if it actually stays in this time.
mean, honestly, I was the first time I used this, so... I mean, it's not like I beat the crap out of it before I did this. Actually, we hit the same damn thing. <laughs> wow. Wonder why it wasn't going through. It's the insert fucking fell out of it. <laughs> uh, it's gotta be me. Well, this one might be a bust, guys. Yeah, look at. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, these, these. No good. I don't know if you can. I mean, I'm not even. Let me just make sure that thing is buried in there, and it is. I mean, that's that's in there, but I mean, I can still, I can still wiggle it with my finger. I can make it move. <laughs> yeah, what it did, yeah, it actually, um, maybe actually zoom me out just a hair. What it did, you can see how much farther in that goes now. You can see the lip. See that lip there? It's almost touching the end. I mean, it's in there. No, it's, it's barely even in there. That's as far as I can just pull it out my finger. Yeah, so this, this thing is uh, garbage. That's what this is. Okay, so we got the uh, charge bit in here that's made for aluminum. And we're going to take a cut off of this. And we're running 400 RPM with uh, 5,000 speed rate. 60, 61, we're not breaking the chip. We're still getting the rat's nest, but. So I'm gonna even that out. We're gonna take 100,000. I'm gonna take, let me touch this off here. Set my zero. We're gonna take um, 150 off the diameter, 75 per side. It's cutting it nicely. I'm, I'm just getting this. I'm, you can see what I'm getting. Still getting the rat's nest. Still getting the rat's nest, but it's leaving a pretty good finish. Um. So let's continue that. Wait for this. Once this catches up, that's a full 200,000 off the diameter, 100,000 steps of cut. See if we can do it. Yeah, 
uh, still not breaking a chip though. Okay, let's get the DT tool holder in here and we'll get her set on center height and uh, we'll give that a shot. Okay, so we're gonna come, come up with the same thing here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do the same sequence that we did last time. So we're gonna take 150. breaking the chip. Bogging the lathe down something fierce though because it's a negative rake insert. So let's try a hundred on that. So fifty thousand per side. That works great. Finish is okay. It's not as good as the other one. Let me just take a little, take a 10,000 finish cut. See if that smooths out. That's even breaking that chip too. So that's actually, that's a nice finish there. So it actually works pretty well on aluminum. You break the chip, but I don't get that big rat's nest there. So this is the boring bar here. The insert fits in, in the pocket nice. Everything looks good. I just don't have anything with a bore big enough to get into it. Um, this takes a 600 thousandths bore. The reason why I got this one is because it takes the same size insert as my turning inserts. You can get smaller size bars that take smaller size inserts. I just wanted one that um, had the same inserts I had on hand. And I don't really want to waste a larger piece of my stock drill in the 5 8 bore in it. But Everything looks okay with this and I'm sure it'll work fine. I'm sure you'll see them on the other videos. Okay, so proof is in the pudding. You saw what happened to everything. Uh, now I know, I do understand that this isn't the correct speeds and feeds and everything else is in by the book. It's just by the CD pants. I mean, I got a, I get a 60, 76, shit. I had a 76 year old lathe here that's not the most sturdy of the bunch and is not the fastest of the bunch and cannot push these carbide tools to the to, to their limits, to their capacity. But you can see that there is a limit to what the lathe itself can do. And you also saw that I had better performance with the name brand uh, carbide than I did with the Shars brand carbide. Now, the name brand is about three times the price, but you can find sets on eBay. Actually, the set that I have, I got off of eBay for like 50 bucks, and you would get 10 or 11 of the Shars brand for the same price. Uh, as far as the tool holders go, um, you saw what happened with this potting blade. It's pretty much gone. It's broken. I can't even get the. I can't even get the. Um, I can't even get the insert to stay in there anymore. So you tell me if it was me breaking it or if it was just the bad blade itself. That's you know just a bad design. Now again, I've heard of this happening before when I read reviews and actually I watched one. There was another video online. Uh, same thing happened to that person. Uh, I, same, same exact thing. So, um, could it be me? I'm not eliminating the possibility, but still, it shouldn't shouldn't be that easy to kind of destroy one of these, especially since I can run the high speed steel in there. Not snap the high speed steel; it goes right through this. But a carbide insert on the on the holder, the actual holder will break, and not the carbide insert. Uh, the only good thing that came from that is I do have the block, so if, if I can find a name brand three quarter inch whole, um, potting blade that takes these same inserts, I'm already set up for it, and I have the inserts. Um, as far as the regular tool holders go, the Shaz one performed perfectly fine. Uh, I have no uh, nothing bad to say about the AR Warner ones, made made in USA, made from a local company actually. Uh, in Connecticut up here in New England they were based out of Connecticut I have nothing bad to say about them it's, it's 105 for the set you get five inserts and the extra tool holder here with the little chamfer bit on the end I like the profile of the head a little bit better than the Shars one but I was able to do everything the AR wanna can with the Shars bit 
uh, and it performed the actual tool holder itself performed perfectly fine. So you get $105 versus $25. The only thing I would be worried about with the Shaw's bit over time is stripping out the hole in the uh, actual bit itself in the in the holder. Other than that, you know everything everything else was fine with it. Perf perfectly fine tool holder for what we're using it for. Uh, this little guy I didn't test, but should be exactly the same as the the uh, Shaw's one. The only difference is, is this one is shorter, which is what I don't like about it. This threading tool holder, it works, I've used it in the past, it works perfectly fine. You'll see it in upcoming videos. There's nothing special about it, you've seen tons of people use them. The holder itself works fine, and the inserts itself work fine. So, I really didn't go into that in this, just because I didn't want the video to run ridiculously long. And same thing with the boring bar, I'm sure it works perfectly fine. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, we'll see you in the next one, and uh, we'll get a quick update here probably middle of the week of some upcoming projects and some new tool acquisitions for the shop besides this stuff here and um, our upcoming projects and what we're going to be doing. So uh, again, thanks for watching. Click the like button. Post whatever comments you want. We'll see you on the next video.